Thank you so much for being here in the house of the Lord. And uh, you are the children of Almighty God. If you've called upon the name of Jesus, you are his very own child. Um, he, when you called upon the name of Jesus, he birthed you into being a new creation, and he called you his own. So that becomes very, very important throughout your entire Christian life, because if you're going to walk in the power of God, if you're going to walk in the blessings of God, the prosperity of God, you have to be secure in his love for you personally. You have to know how important you are to him individually, but then you also have to understand how important you are corporately. I believe there was a story in the Old Testament where the prophet of God was surrounded by a great army, and uh, his servant was overwhelmed with fear because he saw the great army coming towards the prophet of God and, you know, they want to take out the prophet, they want to attack God and his plans and purposes. And the servant just said, what's going to happen? How are we going to overcome this? And the prophet of God said, don't worry about it. There's more that are with us than are coming against us. And you know, you can't always see what you look like as a child of God in the Spirit. You can't always see what kind of power and ability and what kind of provisions God has made in the Spirit realm for you. Does that make sense? It's like if you could look into the Spirit realm today, you would see yourself blood washed, redeemed, loved by God. You'd see yourself filled with the Holy Ghost and what that looks like. You would see the power of God and the fire of God resting upon you. You'd see the authority and the power that's in the name of Jesus. You would see that the blessing of Abraham is on you. You would see that you've been redeemed from sickness and disease. And that sickness and disease comes from the outside trying to attack you, but you have authority over it. And it doesn't have any authority over you. You'd be able to see that there are thousands of angels, if not hundreds of thousands, and millions of angels that are surrounding you individually. If you are able to see into the spirit realm, you'd be able to see, like what Pastor Jerry was talking about, something so incredible, something so amazing, something so special that you would not even be afraid of what the enemy is telling you about you this morning. You, you wouldn't even give it a second thought. You would not be concerned what the devil has been battering your mind with all this week. Because all he tells you is lies. All he tells you is that you're, it's, you're not going to make it. But if you could just see into the spirit realm, there are more that are with you than there are with, than with him. But it all begins with how much God cares about you and loves you. Because everything that he has given you in Christ, everything that you have in Christ, is a love gift from the Father. It's a manifestation of how much he loves you. So Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, I think it is, it says, He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And with his stripes, you are healed. It didn't say you're going to be healed. It didn't say he's about to heal you. It didn't say he's thinking about healing you. It said that healing is yours and you are, you are, you are, you were, you are healed. Now, see, that's what the Word of God does. When you read the Word of God and you study the Word of God, it reveals to you what is really going on in the spirit realm. Amen. But see, that healing that belongs to you, that healing that you already are, that's love. Yes, yes. A lot of times we don't think about healing as being a love gift. A lot of times we don't think about the blessing of Abraham being a love gift but yet it is. It's his mercy. It's his love. It's his compassion and his goodness overflowing in your life. All right, so what I want to do today is I want to talk to you just a little bit about this hope that we have in Christ. We, we were talking about the power of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life, but I want to, I want to take a little bit of a different look about it because um, I want to talk to you about how important you are to the Father today, how much he loves you. Is that okay? All right, so let's pray real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation 
in the knowledge of your word in this place today. Thank you for making every heart and mind open and ready to receive your word. I ask you for your anointing to be able to minister to your people. We cover this property and every person within it and online in the precious blood of Jesus. And we bind any interfering spirits in the name of Jesus. And everybody said? Amen. All right, let's go over to 1 John 3, 1 through 3. 1 John 3, 1 through 3. And I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. All right. Let me read. You can listen, you can read with me, whatever you prefer. See how very much our Father loves us. For He has called us His children. And that is what we are. So what are you? And the Apostle John is saying, hey, listen. Look how much your Father loves you. He's called you His very own child. He doesn't call you a servant. He doesn't call you just a friend. He calls you his child by blood. And the Apostle John is saying, look at this. Take a look at it and don't get your eye off of it because this is who you really, really are. How many of you have children? How many of you, when you look at them, you go, you're my child. You're not anybody else's child. You don't belong to anybody else. You don't look like anybody else. You are my very own child. How many of your children know that they are your child? So as a child of God, you have to realize you're his child. When you realize that and accept that and believe that and confess that over yourself, you are actually accepting how much he loves you instead of rejecting it. But sometimes what happens is people grow up in homes where, you know, they didn't have a whole lot of love from their family or from their parents. And so they're always trying to fight for love from people, or they're always trying to get somebody to love them or prove their love to them. And so what they do is they fight for love all throughout their life instead of just accepting it. But you can't fight for the love of God. You don't have to believe God to love you. He made you. He birthed you as his very own child, and that is what you are. And he already loves you. So then it goes on to say, but the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. So the world isn't going to understand that you're his child. The world doesn't care that you're his child. The world isn't going to love you like God loves you as his child. So don't expect the world to cater to you. Don't expect anything from the world. Here is a great principle to live by. I heard it from Keith Moore one time. He said... Expect nothing from anybody, but be grateful for everything. If you live by that, you will have no problems in your life. Expect nothing from anybody. Whatever they give you, whatever they allow to, you know, whatever they respect you with, okay, that's fine. Whatever they don't, don't harp on it. Just thank God that it was so. Because it will keep you out of strife. Amen? Amen. So then it goes on to say here that, um, dear friends, we already are God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we shall be like when Christ appears. How many of you know Jesus is returning? Christ is coming back for you, God's children. He's not coming back for the world. He's not coming back for sinners. He's coming back for you. And it says, the Lord has not shown us what we shall be like when he appears, but we do know this, that we will be like Jesus, for we will see him as he really is. When Jesus returns, every single one of you will look into the air, and you will say, there's Jesus. And you're going to see him perfectly. 
Right now you see him in part because of this natural world that we live in. But when Jesus actually shows up in flesh and blood, you're going to see him in the air and you're going to go, there's Jesus. Wow, look at Jesus. He's in the air. Oh, look at all the saints around him that have gone home to be with the Lord before us. Wow, look at all those dead bodies rising from the grave. Look at all those ashes coming back together in a new uh, incorruptible bodies are being formed for the saints. Oh, did you hear the shout that is resounding around the world? The shout of faith, the shout that resounds around the world, it's time to come home. Did you hear? The, look, there's Jesus. He's up in the air. And the Bible says this, when you see him, you shall see yourself as you really are. So that gives us the indication that until we see him in flesh and blood, we really won't see ourselves perfectly. But that's why we have to keep ourselves in the Word of God. Because the Word of God is a mirror, and it reveals to you who you are as God's child. It keeps you in contact with how much God loves you on a daily basis and how he has not forgotten about you, and how special you are to him, how important you are to him, how glorious you are to him, and how he will fight for you and protect you at all costs. Amen. Amen. So verse 3 goes on to say, and all who have this eager expectation, how many of you have an eager expectation of Jesus' return? Amen. 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 If you don't have that eager expectation, then you either need to make some things right in your life between you and God, or you need to get born again today, which we'll give you the opportunity to do in just a few short minutes. But there's an eager expectation that we must keep in our lives that will keep us pure, just as he is what? So here's every, let me give you a little secret. This will keep you secure in Christ for the rest of your life. Every day when you wake up, keep in mind this. Jesus is going to come back, and he's coming back to get me. And you need to think about that. You need to think about that for a few minutes every single day, first thing when you wake up. And you need to go, he's coming back for me. And because of all that he's done for me, I need to keep myself pure for him. Pure means holy. Yes. Pure means not corrupted by the world. Yes. Amen? Amen? So, but if you don't understand how much he loves you, if you don't behold what an incredible quality of love the Father has given you, shown you, and bestowed upon you, you won't be looking for his return and keeping yourself pure. So, we must behold his love. Say, we must behold his love. We must behold his love. All right, this love that God has given you is an incredible quality of love. And this, the love of God is actually on you. You live in it. You dwell in it every single day. How many of you wake, how many of you went to bed last night? How many of you had a good night's sleep last night? How many of you woke up and you were refreshed because of your rest? That's God's love right there. You woke up to his love. You woke up in his love. You woke up, you, you were sleeping in his love throughout the entire night. Did you know just sleeping through the night? The Bible says that God gives his beloved rest and sleep. Just by the fact that you have rest and you have sleep is an indication that God loves you. People that don't sleep through the night, they don't, they don't know that necessarily. But you can have it. Amen? Amen? So we stand as God's church. We must stand amazed at what he has freely done for us. I'm going to say that again. As the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must stand amazed at what he has freely done for you. Amen. Do you know what amazement means? Have you, seen, have you ever seen something that's just like you're amazed by it? You're in awe of it? Something that is taking your attention, and you just have to stare at it and go, wow. Yes. You're amazed. We have to stand every single morning amazed at how much God loves us. Wow, God loves me. Man, I'm his child. 
Man, he's accepted me. Man, he's not tolerating me. Wow. And he's going to come back and get me out of this earth. And he's going to take me to heaven so that I have peace for all of eternity. Now, when you think like that every single day, it will secure your heart in your salvation. And you have to understand, you stand amazed at what he has freely done for you. You were freely saved. You didn't have to buy your salvation. You were freely healed. You didn't have to buy your healing. You just had to believe that it's done. You were freely blessed with the blessing of Abraham. You didn't have to fight for it or, you know, it's already on you. You didn't have to fight for, to receive the Holy Ghost. He just, you just received it by faith. It was all done freely for you. And you have to stand amazed at it every day and be grateful. So we must wonder and marvel at God's mercy, things that he has given us that we don't deserve. We must marvel and wonder at his grace, undeserved favor, extravagant blessings that he has given us in Christ. We must wonder and marvel at his kindness every single day. One of the greatest things that you can do, I guess there's a lot of great things that you can do today in, in today's service, but one of the greatest things that you can do when you're attacked by the enemy and you're attacked by people is stand back, shut up, and go and praise God. Amen. You know, Jesus, I heard John Bevere say this last night. He goes, um, he was talking to one of his associates uh, on a podcast, and he said, uh, uh, the associate was going, you know, one thing that you've really taught me, uh, uh, Pastor John, or whatever his name is, I don't know how they address him, but he goes, one thing that you've really taught me is that when people revile us, or when people persecute us for being Christians, when people say something nasty to us, even if they are Christians, he goes, one thing that you have taught me is that what, exactly what, to, just to do what Jesus did. When Jesus was revolted at, when he was attacked in word, when he was attacked in aggression by people, for the most part, he just didn't respond. He just kept quiet. So you have to understand the world in which we live. The world in which we lived, yes, there's a spirit world. We can't see all the kingdom stuff that's going on. But you can't see all the demonic stuff going on either. And if you were to see into the spirit realm today, you would see the kingdom of light, and you would see the power that rests upon you, and you would marvel at it, but then on the other side, you would see the kingdom of darkness and Satan and his plans and purposes and all of his demons and principalities, and you would see that they are trying to get a hold of your attention and get you off, get you out of believing what belongs to you. They're fighting for your attention. They're fighting for your soul. They're fighting for your flesh. And when you start to feel that tension and that depression and you start to feel that pressure coming upon you, it's not just a physical thing. It is a spiritual thing that it's attacking you. And you need to recognize that it's the devil. It could have come through somebody. It could have come through your friend. It could have come through a family member. It could have come through the television. It could have come through the phone. But you need to recognize that it's not from God. And you have authority over it and you need to resist it because Satan is out to kill you he's out to rip your heart out and your family and you don't play games with the devil you rebuke the devil amen but see, that's part of God's love just as much. That authority that you have over the enemy, the authority that you have over the devil and over his principalities and powers through the name of Jesus and by the blood of the lamb. You don't know what to do? I plead the blood in the name of Jesus. Just plead the blood. And then walk away and just praise God because there's more that are with you than there are that are with them. All right. 
So God gave his only begotten son to pour out his blood for your redemption and to adopt you into his very own family. The father wants your eyes and your understanding to be open to comprehend, appreciate, and experience this wonderful love with which he loves you. So he doesn't just want you to know about it, he wants you to experience it as well. If we have a genuine revelation of God's love, we will value and treasure it and never abuse it or take it for granted. That's powerful right there. How can you abuse the love of God? You reject it. God says, here, you can be healed. No, I don't want to. And then Satan comes and goes, well, it's not God's will that you be healed. And you start to believe the lie. You can reject the love. Don't reject anything that God has given you. Reject everything that Satan tries to throw your way. But whatever you do, just accept God's love for you. Whatever God wants to do in your life, in your heart, in your ministry, in your business, let him do it. Just yield, surrender, and go with his flow because whatever he has for you is just more love. It's just going to keep on getting gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder. It's not going to get better and better and better and better. It's just... And I don't, even, I don't think that's good English, but it's going to get gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder and gooder. Amen. Let's go over to Ephesians 3, 17 through 18. Ephesians 3, 17 through 18. Uh, actually, we're going to go to, down to 19 as well. And uh, it says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. So what's going to happen when you begin to accept how much God loves you? You're going to develop roots spiritually in God's love, in his acceptance, in his his mercy and compassion for you. And that will keep you what? What's going to keep you strong throughout your days as a Christian? Being rooted in his love for you, not for other people. We have to get rooted in God's love for us personally. Now go to verse 18. And may you have the power to understand. Now God has given you power to understand, to comprehend, as all God's people should. This isn't for a few select people. This isn't for some special people. This is for every child of God. He has given you power to understand how wide, how long, how high, how deep God's love is. So what does that mean? God's love surrounds you. And to the natural mind, it's incomprehensible. So he has to give you power to see it, know it, believe it, accept it. So we're praying today that you receive power to understand this love. But this love surrounds you. It's all around you. And it's so deep. And it's so high. And it's so wide. And it's it's so great. That even on this side of of eternity, we're not going to completely understand it. It's going to take all of eternity in heaven to understand how great his love was and is for you. Now verse 19, he goes, I want you to experience the love of Christ for yourself. I want you to experience it. Say experience it. He goes, it might be too great to understand fully, but then... When you believe this love and you experience it, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. The Amplified Classic Version says this, when you know how much he loves you and you believe it, you will be totally filled with all that God is. Nice. Doesn't this sound great? Just filled with God, filled with Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost all the time. Why? Because you're rooted in just accepting and believing that God loves you. Why is everything going to be okay in your life? Moving forward, God loves you. And you trust his love and his care for you. God is love, and his love must be practically experienced. This love may not be understood by the natural mind, but it can be comprehended by the heart. He has given you a brand new heart. We won't go over there right now, but 2 Corinthians 5.17, Romans 5.5 says he has given you a brand new heart and he has poured his love into it by the Holy Spirit. 
So the love of God is not just around you. As a born-again Christian, his very own personal love that he is is within your heart. So you can receive and draw from that love on the inside of you, but then you can also love other people with that love. Amen? Amen? It may not make sense that he could love the unlovable, but it is true anyway. Remember, before you knew Christ, you were unlovable. Some of you made it very challenging for people to love you. Just don't make it hard for God to love you. All right, let's go over to Romans, uh, actually Ephesians, Ephesians 1. I want to I wanna read this to you in the Amplified class, or I'm sorry, the NLT, Ephesians 1, and let's start with verse 1. Might just read this entire chapter real quick. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I'm writing to God's holy people in Ephesus. I'm writing to God's holy people at words of life. You are God's holy people. You are God's chosen. You are God's selected. You are God's elected. You are holy children of God. And you're also faithful followers of Christ Jesus. See, that's love right there. If you just believe that you're holy, if you just believe that you're a faithful follower of Christ, your life will change. A lot of Christians have a problem receiving that because they go, well, I sinned yesterday, I sinned the day before, I sinned the day before, I can't be holy, I've got to be holy. No, He already made you holy by the precious blood of Christ. That holiness gives you access into His presence to become faithful to Him. So don't run from His presence, run into His presence. That's love. Amen? Amen. It says, verse 2, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you more grace and peace. So in verse 3, he talks about all the spiritual blessings that he has given to you. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. How many blessings has he blessed you with? In the what realm? Because you're united with Christ. Everything that's in heaven belongs to you. Every blessing belongs to you. It is yours. You can't see all the riches and the honor and the glory and the dominion and the power that belongs to you. But all of it that is Christ belongs to you too because you're in union with him. And you can take full advantage of it and appropriate it in your life life. Well, let's look at some of these. Verse 4, even before he made the world, God loved you and chose you in Christ to be, his whole, to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Before he did what? Before he made the world, he loved you. You know, that's like your wife or your husband making dinner for you. And before they make the dinner, they plan out, what can I do for my spouse? How can I show them that I love them through this meal? And God, before he created the world, he thought about you. He loved you. He chose you in Christ to be his holy and faultless child. And then he said, now, because I've already chosen you and made you holy, now I'm going to make a world for you that you can enjoy. That's going to have spiritual and natural blessings within it. Isn't that cool? So, so what does that mean? The world belongs to you just as much as the spiritual blessings belong to you. Amen. Land belongs to you. Houses belong to you. Cars belong to you. God didn't just give you spiritual blessings. He gave you access to all the blessings. They all belong to you. They don't belong to the devil. They don't belong to his crowd. They belong to you. Verse 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Who brought you to himself? You didn't bring yourself to God. He brought you. You had nothing to do with him bringing you. He just saw you on this earth as a sinner, and he said, I'm going to pick you up, carry you to my throne, and everything's going to be okay. So if you didn't have to work for your salvation, then you don't have to work for your salvation now. 
If you didn't have to work for your righteousness then, you don't have to work for your righteousness now because you were already blessed. God just made the decision to bless you. So this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Every single one of you, he picked you up out of the miry clay, and he put you on solid rock, and he brought you to himself, and he brought you here today, and he got you up this morning, and he brought you to South Florida, and he brought you into light, and he brought you into the kingdom. You you didn't get here by yourself. It's what he wanted to do. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Why do we praise God? For his glorious or his unmerited, expressive, affectionate, overflowing love that he poured out on you every day. Say every day. I got to praise the Lord for this glorious grace. Don't forget, don't go through your Christian life and forget what he did for you. Because it's all a manifestation of his great love for you. And when you give glory to him for it, you're just saying, thank you, Lord. You love me. Thank you, Lord. You care for me. So, I mean, we could keep on going, but how wonderful is this love that we should even be allowed to be named and called and counted God's very own children? We could, you could be the devil's children, but you're not, you're God's. How, 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 how many of you know what it was like to be a sinner before you came to Christ? Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. How, how many of you know how dark it was? How, how many of you know how corruptible it was? Yes. Binding, yep. destructive, yep. fearful. Yep. How many of you know how hard it was yes. to serve the devil? But how many of you know when you compare it to right now? Can you see how great of a love? He gave you? Yes. Can you see why it's called the song of the redeemed? Yes. Can you see why he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so? You know, sometimes we're out hunting for all the blessings. We're out hunting for the car, for the house, what we need from God. And instead of hunting those things, just focus your attention on what he's already blessed you with in Christ. Because then you'll wake up and you'll realize the house, the car, the land, the dreams in the spirit realm, they're already done and they're already belonging to you. And you don't have to work for them. You just have to enter into a rest in this glorious redemption, in this glorious love and say, my father, he took me out of hell. He saved me from an eternity in hell. He saved me from the power of the devil and he washed me in his blood and he called me holy and he made me faithful and loyal to him when I was unlovable. If he, if, see, that's the greatest miracle that's ever taken place. If, if he did that for me, how much more will he do for you? How much more will he do for me? If he gave you Christ, how much more? And he gave Christ to you freely. So the house will be free as well. Debt free. But you must stand in this love. You must stay in this love. Amen. And you must value it with your life. Because the more you value it, the more you'll just sit back and receive. And it will be easy to receive. 
Let's go to 1 John 2, 6. So, you know, now that Christ has redeemed you from the power of the enemy and all these blessings belong to you and you're going to stand in the love of God, this must be the rule that you live by. In view, you can put it this way. Let's say, let's say you committed a horrendous crime and you were brought before the court of judgment and the judge and everybody was trying to defend your case but all of the evidence was against you. And the judge hears all of these accusations, sees all of the evidence, the jury is ready to convict you and to damn you, but let's just say, let's just say, that the judge goes, you know what, I love you. I'm gonna let you go free. And we're not going to hold you accountable for what you've done. We're going to give you a second chance at life. Just make sure that you live it the right way. As, the, as you walk out of the courtroom, you are filled with mercy and favor and with an overwhelming love and a gratitude for a new lease on your life. And as you walk out of that courtroom, you do not need to return to your old ways. You need to return to a new way and a new law. 1 John 2.6, whoever says he abides in Christ ought as a personal debt what does a criminal do, one that was once a criminal, what do they do when they were forgiven of their sin? They owe a debt to the one that forgave them. Huh? Whoever says he abides in Christ ought as a personal debt. to walk their life, conduct themselves in the same way in which he walked and conducted himself. Verse 7, Beloved, I'm writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment which you have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the message which you have heard, the doctrine of salvation through Christ. Yet I am writing you a new commandment which is true in him and in you because the darkness is clearing away and the true light is already shining. Verse 9, and it says, whoever says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in darkness even until now. Verse 10, whoever loves his brother abides in the light and in it or in him there is no occasion for stumbling or cause for error. So now that Christ has set you free and he has washed you of all of your sins as a personal debt, what must we do? How does he want you to conduct and live your life? One word, one word. What, what word are we looking for? What's the command? Love. Say it a little bit louder. All, you know, 70 of you said it. How, how, all, the entire room, all together. What's the one thing that now we must do as a personal debt to Christ? No. Say it again. No. Say it again. No. Say it again. No. Say it again. No. Come on, louder. Say it again. No. Say it again. No. Say it again. No. Hallelujah. You'll never be able to repay God for what he's done for you through Christ. Never. But he goes, listen. As a debt, as a favor to me, since I have called you my own and cleared you of the conviction of Satan or condemnation of Satan, I need you to walk in love. Amen. Say it's my personal debt to God himself. Okay, so this is just how we're going to close. Because we know that God's word is true and that Jesus is coming soon, we prepare ourselves to meet him. We know that we belong to Christ. We know that he has purged your hearts and sin washed and cleansed you. We know that now sin has no more power over you. 
And we know that you are empowered by the word and the spirit of God to walk in love, righteousness and purity. And so now you must prepare yourself to meet him by walking these things out in your life. With God's help, say with God's help, I will practice purity, holiness, godliness, even as I expectantly wait for his soon return. Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for a glorious church. You are his glorious church, one without spot or wrinkle. And when he returns, he shall see a holy and a pure church, a church that walks in love, not just within Miami, but around the world, a church that has been unified, a church that is on fire for Jesus Christ himself. And there is nothing else in this world that holds your attention or has your heart. Say, he's coming back again for me, for me. He's coming back again for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Did you get anything out of the word today? All right, with eyes closed, heads bowed, please, uh, just all across this place, please don't leave. Don't make any sudden movements except the worship team. Um, and ushers, but with heads bowed, eyes closed, uh, may I present to you today an opportunity to receive Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. The Bible says, whoever calls upon his name shall be saved. There is no other name in heaven or on earth or under the earth by which a man shall be saved. It says one day that all of heaven, earth, and hell shall have to bow down to the name of Jesus and call him Lord over all the kingdoms and magistries and all the different uh, universes. He is Lord over all of the citizens of the universe. And so today, I am asking you if you feel like you are far from God, if you sense that you have not walked with God, if you sense that you do not know Jesus, I am calling you home today in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus because there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. Heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. This life is just a vapor. It is just a breath of air by which we are walking through. One moment we are here, the next moment we are gone, and in eternity we will either face heaven and Jesus and the saints that have gone before us or we shall face hell and the demons that lie beneath but today I am begging you by the mercy by the forgiveness by the glorious love of Jesus Christ that you come home today that you give your heart to Jesus that you give your mind to Jesus that you give your life to Jesus and that you do not walk away from him ever This is the most important decision that you can ever make in your life because eternity, eternity is the most realest thing we will ever come in contact with. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus loves you. The Father loves you. God the Father loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. Heaven loves you. The saints here love you. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus that will give their life to Jesus. But you just must turn away from your sin. You must fall on your face before Jesus and say, here I am. I will go with you all the way because now I see that you truly love me. And that you're not the one that has been pushing me away. You're the one that has been calling me home. You're the one when I wake up in the morning that I hear your voice. That still small voice. You're the one that's convicting me. You're the one that is encouraging me. You're the one that's protecting me. I should have been dead 1,200 different times in the past 20 years. But you were protecting me and keeping me by your mighty hand. And I'm not dead. I'm still alive. And I can choose you today, Jesus. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Not today. Tomorrow you might be dead. Next week you might be dead. But today is the day of salvation. So don't waste any more time. Don't let the devil talk you out of your salvation. Don't let him talk you into another year of waiting on Jesus. Just give your heart to him. Give your mind to him. Give your heart to him. Give your mind to him. And he will raise you up and you will become mighty on this earth. And you will become glorious on this earth because he will never leave you nor forsake you in the name of Jesus. If that's you in this place with heads bowed, eyes closed, can you please raise your hand high? 
If that's you here today, can you please raise your hand high? I see that hand over there. Thank you, sir. Please raise your hand high. There's no time to waste. The Bible says even if it's just one, heaven will rejoice over one soul that comes into the kingdom of God. Anymore, with heads bowed, eyes closed, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. There's another one over here. I see that hand. I see that hand. In the name of Jesus, I see that hand. I see that hand. Thank you so much. Now please open your eyes, raise your heads. Just look towards me one more time. If you're in any of these sections and you did not raise your hand for the altar call, please raise your hand right now. We're going to give you one last chance. Time is ticking. Time is ticking. All right, thank you so much. For those of you that raised your hands, can I ask you to do me a huge favor? Not me, but Jesus. Can you please stand to your feet? Boldly, just stand up very boldly. Gather your belongings and come down to the altar. And run down to the altar. Don't wait. Don't move slowly. Just run down here in the name of Jesus. Because every chain is being broken off of your life. Come on, give them a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. Come right here. Just stand towards this wall for me. Just close your eyes, lift your hands. I'll be with you in just a moment. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come. Come to the altar. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Just raise your hands, close your eyes. Just going to give you a few more moments. Anyone else? Rise. Even if, it, even if we're doing the prayer and you go, I should have answered that altar call, you get up out of the seat and you run down here. Bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming up here and answering the call. No, I don't really. No, ah, okay, okay, okay. Um, do I have somebody that can translate for me? Okay, so tell, just repeat to her what I'm going to say, okay? All right, just close your eyes, lift your hands to heaven. Just say this, dear Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. I believe you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for washing me in your blood. I receive now your eternal life and all these blessings in heavenly places. I am yours, Jesus. You are mine. Take my life and make something beautiful out of it. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hey. Now, now just look up here. You'll have to repeat to her. Yeah. Look up here. I am here to tell you that you are a child of the Most High God, that you are born again, that you are redeemed from the curse of Satan. His power has been broken over your life.
and now you shall serve the Lord Jesus Christ and have peace, joy, love, and blessing. Always run to God and to his word and never run from him. He loves you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Love you, man. Yeah. Good. spoke to me because I was I was facing charge to court. Wow. Bad or not, got a second chance. Really? Second chance. I would have done 35 years. Wow. So that's why I'm here now. Wow. He said he would have done 35 years in prison, but the Lord gave him a second chance. Wow. Wow. I'm still on paper, so I'm still I'm still on paper. Okay. I'm on probation. Okay. I'm hanging in there. Okay. Well look at this man right behind you. I want you to get with him. Okay? I want you to help him. This man right here has some similar testimonies to you. And God has changed his life, and he's going to help you change your life. Okay? <laughs> he, he, he goes into the prisons every third Sunday, and he preaches Jesus to those that are in there, and he sets them free. Yeah. It's Jesus. Just tell her it's Jesus. It has nothing to do with me. And we love her. Amen. Welcome. Now, now I need you to go with her. Okay. Miss Adassa, see this lady over here? She's got her hand raised. She's going to take you to a prayer room real quick. And I want you to go with him, okay? And you just ministered. Miss Adassa, we have a meet and greet right after service, so you might have to take them into a different room, okay? All right. All right, well, why don't we stand? Just raise your hand to heaven and just thank God for the souls that have come in today. Just thank Him. The most important thing that you're ever going to do with your life is get saved and go to heaven and stay out of hell. Dear Jesus. All right, just, just raise your hands over here to the coastline. Say, in the name of Jesus, we enforce the 100, 200, 300 mile bloodline around South Florida. We bind hurricanes, tropical storms. We bind depressions. We bind any type of tropical waves or tropical events, flooding by air, sea or land. We're not allowing anything here. In the name of Jesus, we send forth the mighty hand of God to destroy, minimize, and steer those storms away from us. I speak peace to South Florida. I speak peace to my life. And I cover it in the blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now just lift your hands to heaven, close your eyes, focus on Jesus, and just say, thank you, Father. I am your child. You are my Father. It is a glorious thing. It's a holy thing concerning what you've done for me. You've washed me in the blood. You've called me your own. You've set me free from Satan. You filled me with your Holy Spirit. You've given me powers from heaven to rule and reign as a king on this earth. I am a king and a priest in Christ Jesus. I am your beloved. And I just want to say thank you, Father. 
I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus. I know He's coming back soon. And I will keep myself pure for you in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, give the Lord a mighty praise. Come on, you can do better than that.